Hey everyone, I'm Scott Shigeoka. I'm GoDaddy's entrepreneur in residence, and I'm here at home sheltering in place. And for the next 15 minutes or so, I'm going to be doing a roundtable with some experts about PPP or the Paycheck Protection Program. There's been some updates and we have some new questions that we want to dig into. Like what's different about this round versus the first round and how should we approach lenders as small business owners to capitalize on this opportunity? And what are some barriers or challenges we might expect as small business owners? So to answer these questions, we're bringing back a group of experts to talk about this together with me. We have John Stanford from the Association for Enterprise Opportunity. We have Brian Peters from the Franklin Square Group and Ashley Heineman, who's GoDaddy's Director of Global Policy. And just before we begin, I wanted to disclaim that this isn't legal or financial advice. There's a lot of trusted news sources and authoritative websites where you can get information. And those links are actually going to be below. But I'm hoping that this roundtable that we're doing is a great discussion that helps you as an entrepreneur and all of our community get through this COVID-19 crisis. Thanks again for joining me, everyone. I'm hoping we can start with a little reminder what is the CARES Act and what specifically is the PPP? So the CARES Act is a $2 trillion uh, stimulus program that consists of uh, stimulus payments to individuals. Those are the stimulus checks or payments that everybody's getting. Uh, it's uh, roughly a half trillion in small business uh, loans that we'll talk a lot more about today. And then another uh, half trillion uh, for uh, larger business loan programs administered by the Treasury Department and the Federal Reserve. And there were some recent policy changes to the PPP, right? So I think one of the most newsworthy elements of PPP uh, in the CARES Act was how speedily it ran out of funding. Uh, we knew that Congress would refill that program, and that's what they did. And so by and large, PPP really didn't change in what we're calling CARES Act 2.0. But there were a couple slight changes. Most notably was the addition of two separate pools of money. Um, as many folks saw, there were concerns that the initial batch of funding for PPP wasn't reaching the smallest um, or rural or minority business owners. And so one of the ways Congress tried to address this was by creating two additional pools of money. 30 billion was set aside for mid-sized lending institutions, those with 10 to 50 billion on their books, and then 30 billion was set aside for institutions with less than 10 billion on your books. I think the jury and the data is certainly still out, but we do know just like the first time around, this money is and has moved quickly. Could you talk a little bit about the challenges and some of the frustrations that small businesses might be facing right now? There's just a, an overwhelming demand of interest in these loans, first of all. And the infrastructure just isn't set up in a way to, to handle it. If you look at where things were last year outside of this pandemic situation, you had just about as many applications for loans as you've seen in the last two days. So you really just have a system that's in place that's not capable of dealing for the type of volume that you're seeing in terms of interest in these loans. You had banking institutions having to constantly refresh just to get their um, the loans of their clients processed and, and submitted to the SBA. Then there's also there's also been issues in terms of getting updates with respect to what the status of the applications are. What happened in the last round basically is that a lot of applications went in and the money ran out for the program before they were able to be processed. So the, this has been really difficult in terms of, you know, a small business in particular who really wants to, you know, have some assurances that all this hard work is going to pay off. So with these changes with the PPP, do we think that the money will actually get to small businesses this time? Well, as John mentioned, uh, they have designated uh, two chunks, $30 billion for uh, medium-sized banks and another $30 billion for uh, small banks. I think one of the challenges is, though, that that is based on an assumption that uh, medium-sized and small-sized banks mean small businesses, and that's not necessarily the case. You could have a very small uh, community bank on the corner, uh, but they may ultimately uh, distribute loans to large businesses in their community and not necessarily the barbershop or the coffee shop. All right, so one thing I keep hearing from small business owners is which lender do I go to? Do I go to a smaller bank? Do I go to a larger bank? What's your advice? I think it's kind of a knowledge tree or a decision tree of 
first go to the bank who knows you already. If, if you have a bank who knows you, uh, there are restrictions around uh, know your customer rules and anti-money laundering rules that will make getting you onboarded faster and simpler because the bank knows you. But my underlying recommendation is don't put all your eggs in one basket. You are only allowed one PPP loan for your business, but that doesn't mean you're only allowed one PPP application. And so I would pursue these lines with wherever you can, if you have the time and opportunity, and wait to see which one confirms a loan with the SBA first. There's nothing that's preventing you from then pulling back all the other applications and pursuing the one uh, that actually went through. And I think the folks who try multiple ways to get these loans will probably be the ones at this late hour that have a semblance of success. So it sounds like the money for the second round is running out. Should we expect that there's future rounds coming soon? We're really not sure. Um, We've heard from many of the key stakeholders through this process, whether that's folks in the Senate, folks at the Department of Treasury, folks at the SBA, some have been very explicit that they don't see the PPP program having continued funding um, and that the 600 plus billion dollars is sort of the end of the road. I think there are many more folks, there's certainly been a large advocacy effort to expand the program and to expand the time horizon of the program. And the last piece I'll say on this is, um, many of the challenges that the program has that, um, that have already been spoken to are issues that we have known for a long time. Um, and coronavirus isn't necessarily causing new divides about um, who is going to recover fastest and resiliency. It's exposing what we've known to be true for decades. Um, Capital access is a bigger challenge in certain places. Underbanking in underserved areas is a challenge, and we're only seeing it really come to a head during a crisis. And so I think we'll continue to need to explore what options are best for those communities. Could you talk a little bit about the PPP in particular and whether there was any you know, racial disparities or racial inequity that was at play in regards to how the funding was distributed. If you look at this program like any other federal program, they do have uh, language built in um, what they consider to be um, approaches to dealing with minorities, to dealing with tribal situations, to dealing with veterans. The, the, the right words are there, but at the end of the day, if you look at the data, the, the ones that end up profiting the most from these types of programs are the large businesses, the ones that um, are more tapped in. So I think having a, a complete overhaul of the system is probably something that's long overdue. Is there any evidence to show that this is making a difference for small business owners? I have not seen a lot of uh, uh, kind of anecdotes of companies out there that are um, jumping for joy that they received their, their PPP loan. But, but who knows? I'm sure we'll start to see more evidence and more anecdotes as, as we, we see some of the, the better stories out there. I, I agree completely with Brian, but uh, if you look at the numbers coming out of the SBA, there have been 1.66 million loans approved. So one has to assume that this the, this money is getting to at least some hands that really need them. And um, if you look at what the SBA is saying, that this supports more than 30 million jobs. So that that is, that is promising if you take that at least at face value. On the PPP website, they say that Uh, June 30th is an important date. Can you talk about what happens on that date and what small business owners should know about it? The June 30th date is tied to the loan forgiveness element of the program, which is far and away the most attractive and interesting piece. Banks are very concerned about what uh, is, or I should say lenders more broadly are uh, very concerned about moving forward on loan forgiveness without really clear guidance. And there are a lot of different elements of that. You touched on one, the idea that you need to have your head count back up uh, by June 30th. We don't know what that really means besides what the law spelled out, and it left a lot of things undefined. For example, we don't know the definition of a full-time equivalent employee and how many hours that should translate to. I think that's one question that business owners and lenders are really watching on. We will need to watch these loan forgiveness requirements very carefully. So right now we have a lot of small business owners who are really struggling to keep their doors open 
you know, what's your advice for them? It's never been more important to belong to local, state, and national organizations. Uh, I think this has exposed that communication and knowledge really is power here in a sense. Um, if you knew about PPP earlier, um, you maybe got into the program earlier, you had a better likelihood. So I think increased communication and awareness of these programs is critical. My sense is that uh, one of the aspects of this program that has been uh, particularly troubling for a lot of uh, potential uh, small business borrowers is just the, the paperwork requirements, um, what you uh, have to, to show in the initial application process and what you will eventually have to show uh, for the purposes of proving that you've maintained some amount of, of payroll. So I, I would recommend uh, that, that people be organized, as organized as they possibly can, and try to have as much of that um, digitized and in some sort of a, a digital platform where you can readily access it. The funds may be uh, running out quickly again, but I think for the next go around to John's point, uh, we, we definitely would recommend that, that businesses be kind of plugged in, so to speak. And another thing that I just can't stress enough is just be ever vigilant of scams. Pay attention to what your emails look like that you receive. And before you respond to anything, do take take a breather, do some due diligence and make sure that what you're responding to, whoever, whoever you're giving your information to, that you're giving it to um, the people you think you are. I'm noticing that a lot of small business owners are taking this time to be really creative and to really innovate their businesses. What have you been noticing? It's been really interesting to, kind of, to to sit back and watch how small companies, businesses in particular, have really taken advantage of this opportunity because they're forced to, to retool themselves, to, to reinvent themselves. And that's been really exciting to watch. And I'm, I'm curious to see how this all plays out at the end of the day. We have seen 10 years of digital growth in 10 weeks. And I think that's going to be one of the stories that is so fascinating. It has been a game changer for the businesses that found a way to get online. I was talking uh, with a doctor's office today uh, who never had any intention to get into telemedicine uh, and telehealth and now is seeing patients uh, virtually and has revamped their website in order to be helpful to patients. I think that may be one of the underlying stories when all of this has passed um, we will have seen a transformation of our economy and an acceleration of what it means to be a digitally fronted business. It was really great to talk to you all. Thanks so much for your time, for your wisdom, for your energy. And I hope you stay safe and well during this time. I hope you found some value from this roundtable today. I know that the PPP is constantly changing and there's so much unknown and a lot of information. And I am sure that some of you still have questions. So I encourage you to leave comments below. And if you need some resources or more information, you can go to openwestand.org and subscribe to this channel to keep up to date. And until next time, I hope you stay safe and well. <laughs>